the next question everyone has is what's a good conversion percentage that we should be aiming for? That depends on your company. It depends on how you define a stage. It depends on who you're comparing it to. But the ability to use those filters, like you said, will help you start to compare it and see it across jobs, across the companies that you're working with, across your organization as a whole. I think you bring up a really key point with the question of what is a good conversion rate? What should that look like? This report can start to give you that benchmark. And it's not something that I think there is a right or wrong answer with. Initiating becoming a hiring machine sequence in three, two, one. Hey everyone, it's Sam Keenly, and welcome to Becoming a Hiring Machine. This is the show dedicated to fixing recruitment by going beyond saying what needs to change and instead teaches you how to make that change. Today, we have a great Tactical Tuesday ahead of us, but before we get into that, I just want to tell you a little bit about the show. Essentially, we've got shows within the show here. Some days we have interviews with industry thought leaders and others who are shaking up the space. Other days we cover trending topics, items that recruiters are talking about or will be very soon, what those mean for them. Drop by every Tuesday for a Tactical Tuesday episode where we go deep on how to do, do something that's going to help you drive better results in your day to day. Some days we open it up for Q&A. Listeners can drop in questions that they'd like to hear us take on. So send those to us at podcast at loxo.co. And occasionally you'll hear a mic drop episode from Matt where he shares something that's been bouncing around in his head within the recruitment space and things you should know. Today's Tactical Tuesday. We are continuing our five episode mini series on all things reporting. We have Logan Heck, one of our CSM team leads, joining us to go over the essential things we need to know. And today's episode is going to revolve around the candidate pipeline specifically. So with that, grab a pen and paper, pull out your notes app, and let's get into it. Logan, welcome back. Sam, nice to be back. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, I love these. These are so much fun. I feel like I learn something new every week. So it's it's a uh, it's definitely a joy on my side. So the candidate pipeline. Why is reporting so important here? A couple of reasons. Um, I'd say two of the most important ones here are going to be revolving around your kind of job overall job health. I'd say that's probably the most important. And then number two, maybe equally important, I guess, is identifying any bottlenecks in your process, right? And that. That can be used for both coaching as well as just identifying, you know, where the business can needs to make any changes to get people uh, to the hired stage, because uh, I think that's the end goal for everybody. You know, I, I think uh, if you're looking at a report, seeing that there's <clears throat> a lot of people getting submitted uh, and then there's a huge drop off in interviewing, you can start to open up the hood a little bit, peel back and see what's going on there. I love it. So, okay, we've got those insights there. And you've got a couple reports that we're going to get into today, specifically two that we think every recruiter should have be able to build in their their back pocket to help with this. So let's get into that first report that you've got. And then for anyone watching, we're going to we're going to share our screens. Logan's will we'll talk through it as well. So if you're listening, well, you should be able to get a, a good sense of what we're going through, but definitely tune into the video side. We've got on our YouTube, on our on our website for anyone that wants to see some of the supporting visuals with this. Absolutely. Uh, so with that, I'll share my screen. And the first report we're going to look at here uh, is going to be our stage conversion report. So <clears throat> in this example here, uh, and what I think, you know, a lot of customers uh, that I've worked with kind of challenge the thought to start to think about what are some really important stages? And again, maybe where you're seeing bottlenecks happen uh, within your pipeline. So for here, what I did was uh, just put a filter of looking at our short list to submitted to hired. Um, so in this case, you might wanna see, you know, short list being people that uh, you've identified to be good candidates of that amount, you know, how many are making it to the, how many are getting submitted to clients and then from there, how many are getting hired? That might be different for everybody across the board. There's everybody is going to have you know a different stage or kind of a different coupled here. Some folks might also want to just use all stages and see it down the board. Um, what I also did here was I segmented uh, by candidate source, which I think could be another uh, insightful. I know we talked about that in a prior episode, but if I'm looking at this, I'm seeing you know my short list where uh, my candidates are coming from. And then starting to see a trend down the line of how many of those are making it to uh, a submitted stage and then a hired stage. And I can start to identify where in this front end of our process, we want to start, I guess, utilizing a, a source to find candidates for because they're clearly making it to the finish line. These percents here, 
are going to look at basically your entire candidate pipeline as a whole um, and how the current number compares to that, right? So 92% of our pipeline was in the shortlist at some point, 235, or excuse me, 253, so 19% again, of our entire pipeline and down the line here. And then what you can do here is you can look at a summary view where this is going to look at the workflow stages here and then it has your sources listed out. Detailed view is going to give you just a nice little uh, <clears throat> view of everything, uh, all the candidates, jobs, companies uh, that you can also export and take a look at maybe a little bit further. Uh, if you need to maybe share with a particular client, uh, that might be something you can also uh, just add a filter of a company, and then look at all of the company's jobs across the board here in this conversion report. Yeah, I love this because you can go so many different directions with this one called like the master report to make a bunch of child reports from it. So, you know, going from the customization of what are the stages that are most impactful for you to know? And then I know the next question everyone has is, well, what's a good conversion percentage that we should be aiming for? Well, that depends on your company. It depends on how you define a stage. It depends on who you're comparing it to. It depends on if you want to get into like the industries, the jobs, everything else that's going to change a little bit. But the ability to use those filters, like you said, will help you start to compare it and see it across jobs, across the companies that you're working with, across your organization as a whole, and use that to inform, well, like you, you said at the beginning, like what are the bottlenecks? What are the processes that we can use to coach and improve the team members on? So I really, really like that you got into this report first as kind of like a good master report to start with. Yeah. And Sam, I think you bring up a really key point with what is a the question of what is a good conversion rate? What should that look like? I think this report is can start to give you that benchmark. Um, and it's not something that I think there is a right or wrong answer with. It's going to be different across companies, clients, uh, did how recruiters go about things. But as you start to look at this report over time, you're going to begin to get a better benchmark of what you're looking for or what is working. Uh, and Again, hopefully eliminating any bottlenecks in the process. Um, and then you can start to set goals based on that as well. I love it. And we talked all about goals and, and pulling some reports on those in a previous episode. So definitely be sure to, to check that one out. So, okay, this is one great report. Now, I know you've got another one that I think is also going to be equally if not, I don't want to say more valuable. It's going to be equally valuable. Both are incredibly valuable for anyone listening or watching. All right. Uh, so, Sam, this uh, second report we're looking at here is going to be a candidate insight or candidate status report. And what we're looking at here um, is essentially a screenshot of, uh, again, a current stage and where people, our candidates are at uh, in a particular pipeline. So, again, for this particular example, what I did was just selected some of the stages on the back end uh, of a pipeline. There could be many cases that you want to look at all stages. Uh, what I did down here was I just grouped it by stage and then segmented by job. So if I'm hovering over here and I need to maybe get on a job or take a look at a job for a customer, or excuse me, a client, you have the ability to come here and say, okay, we've got uh, two people for the Lox Electrical Engineer job. And, <clears throat> you know, just kind of running down the line here to make sure that there aren't any slips in the cracks. And then I think you alluded to this earlier, Sam, is this allows, uh, I think is a good snapshot for your uh, clients. And you can add any filters here by a particular job, uh, maybe a particular company that you wanna share their overall, just all of their jobs and what the current state of that is. Uh, I see that used a lot. Okay, so getting into, yeah, how it's then being shared or, or transmitted over to the clients. You have this view that it's great for yourself, for your like what you're working through, whether it's you individually, if you're managing a team, your overall company insight. But I know all of us at some point have gotten that email from the client. Give me the latest update on this job or, or the, the jobs that you're working for us, whether it comes once a month, once a day, once an hour. There is an easy way that you can pull out this insight versus I know so many people are like, oh, I have to do this manually. It's such a pain. And how do you get this information over to them in a way that it doesn't take too much time away from you to do that, so to speak? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think every uh, client is probably going to be a little different. Uh, some may prefer to just see a summary view, right? Where they 
uh, are looking, obviously this is a lot of jobs, but if we had it filtered to a specific company, they may just wanna see a pure numerical count of how many people are in each stage. They might also wanna see a detailed view. Uh, from this detailed view, I think we talked again about this in an earlier episode, you can come in here and you can dictate what is being seen here. So maybe they don't need to have their phone or email, uh, or maybe they don't need the owner of the candidate put in there as well. So you can kind of dictate that. And then from here, what you can do is you can come up to this uh, next to the uh, board option, you can export. And again, you can de uh, export that either summary view uh, or the detailed view below, and it will also download the chart for a visual as well that you can send over. So uh, definitely a great thing to utilize here. And it gives the customer, excuse me, your client, just a really clear view of what the current status of a any given job is. And I'm sure that's going to be different across the board per client. Uh, but again, what Sam was alluding to, you can always build on reports, uh, save as new, and then so you're not having to go start from scratch every time. A really valuable thing to do, especially if you have a lot of clients that are asking for uh, the status of their jobs. I love it. Well, these are incredibly helpful. I hope people are definitely going to you know, find some quick ways to make their jobs easier, pull out some different insights. Was there anything else within these that, that we've missed or, or think would be helpful for listeners? No, Sam, good question. I think uh, just, again, when we're looking at our pipeline reports, there's so many different use cases. It could be internal, it could be client facing, it might be internal and client facing. It's just determining what needs to be shown, filtering accordingly, and then you've got a pretty easy couple clicks to get that information to who needs it. I love it, so simple. Well, Logan, as always, truly, truly, truly appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. Rumor has it you've been started to be called the guru of reporting within our, our team here at Loxo. So hopefully this is helpful to people. I know you and I are learning more every, every day as we as we go through these. So um, it's definitely helpful for the recruiters that are listening. And, and hopefully they start incorporating these. Again, whether you use Loxo or not, doesn't matter. You can start building these reports, understanding how do you use your data to get to these different insights. So as we wrap, Becoming a Hiring Machine is a production of Loxo. You can Find the show notes in the description of your favorite podcast streaming platform. If you like this episode and you're not sure where to go next, we've also got a link to a similar episode to this. And if you want to see the video version, again, we went through some, some charts, some reports today. We've got that up on YouTube. We also have it on our website, loxo.co slash podcast. If you have questions for us, you, you especially if you want to get into some of the reporting things, send those to us, podcast at loxo.co. So, all right, everyone, that is the show. That's yet another great Tactical Tuesday with Logan. Until next time, bye, y'all.